Welcome to the Hancock Hill Homestead page. Uh, had a few things I just wanted to get on here and say that a uh, few things has happened in the last little while. One is we've had a storm here in the last couple of days that I cleaned up a lot of it. That's why I said I've had two or three ask about helping me, but you know, it didn't take that long. I mean, we got it done. I wish I could have videoed the tree damage that we had. We had uh, the pecan trees we have here in the yard. They covered the front yard mostly. Um, and I got most of it done. And I'll show you a little bit of a wood pile a little bit later here that what I've done. But one thing that hurt me the most has been here way before my time and it's died one time it's come back and then, and then now it's destroyed again and that's my crab apple tree you see that the wind blew it over and broke it off over there and i'd love to see if i can't save it somehow or another but i don't know how that's the other thing i'm trying to figure out what to do how to do and salvage some that's something i'm trying to do save another sprig of it i'm hoping that it'll come out from the trunk come up and it uh at least maybe come out and bloom out or sprout out or something uh, but i've also thought about grafting a piece onto it you know i'm just doing a lot of thinking trying to get that done i've had some other stuff you see where the I had my other chicken pen for temporary chicken pen. The wind even blew it down and blew it apart. Uh, it, it was tough. It was really tough here. We had, we probably had 100 miles an hour plus winds here, and I was thankful, but the only thing it did was blow the door on my greenhouse open. It did that, and you see the tree limbs laying everywhere. It's just unreal how much one little little puff of wind can come and whole lot but uh we didn't have it as bad as some of the other people did we still people without power uh there's some people that probably lost uh some major damage to their homes uh, power outages i mean i'm sitting here looking at my neighbor's yard and there's a huge i mean it's been here probably a hundred years a big big tree that's been over here behind his house and it's broke off it's gone um one of my family members over on highway nine has a pecan tree that i know my ancestors planted that it broke it all the way off but about 10 foot off the ground it's i mean it's just twisted twisted off and how they can say straight line winds can twist something off I don't understand how straight line winds can do that. Usually straight line winds pushes it and breaks it off one way. But um, what we saw, it had rotation in the, in, the, in the air. You could see it in the yard. And I mean, you could see it not only here, but everywhere else I've been and helped with the fire department. We had the uh, traffic control on Highway 9 and cause there was multiple, I don't even know how many trees it was, but it was multiples. And that's why I said I got to give a shout out to the High Point Fire Department, Rudemont Croggin, uh, Frank Howie Farms, and especially Lynch's River, because those guys stayed with us the whole time, helping us get the power lines out of the road. They were helping us get uh, fiber optic cables out of the road that you know we're not allowed as firemen and and uh, stuff like that to touch the power lines because we don't know if they're energized or not. But those guys have got special gloves that come up to their elbows that. You know they can do that and they got also they got a uh, some kind of stick fiberglass stick that they can grab it and drag it out of the road and that's why i said i was super thankful for those guys being out there with us because we had power lines that were we had people that were trapped in between trees down on the road that they were in the middle and they couldn't go forward or whatever and you know and after a storm the heat comes and they're sitting out our side of the road there's nowhere to go and you can't get in or out so uh, glad they were patient enough for us with the fire department to be able to get in and with the other groups. But uh, I just wanted to show you that the damage that I had, and that was one that hurt me. And that's why I said that this thing was loaded with the crab apples. See? And that's what it makes. It makes these every year. 
believe me, if you've never had one, you don't know what sour is or what bitterness is till you have one of these. And some people say, well, what are they good for? Well, in the old days, they would pickle them. They would take the whole thing and pickle it in, boil it in uh, some sweet, some kind of sweet looking stuff, whatever. And they would pickle these things and they would make them a pickled apple. And after you let them sit in that brine and that sweet sour brine for a long period of time, they would sweeten up and they would taste like candied apples. That's what they would make with pickled candied apples. I don't remember ever having any, but I've seen it. I've seen it on YouTube. Some of the YouTubes have had them and stuff like that. So, um, Somebody else said something about, why can't you plant the seeds? Well, if they would, there would be plenty of seeds come up around the ground here because never seen a sprout come up or anything like that. So I don't know why they don't make, they don't come up. Uh, I know there's probably been several tried, but you know, that's why I said, this is a, might well say it's a legacy tree for me. Cause I mean, it's been here my entire life. My dad said it was here when he was a young boy. So, you know, and my dad's been dead now for 15 years. So he was 70 something years old when he was still alive before he passed and he talked about it. So, you know, losing something like that, like a tree or whatever, like my pecan trees. And that's what I said, I don't mind showing you, but my pecan trees, my ancestors and them, you see how large they are? They're huge. To lose something with big limbs in them and stuff, and that's why I said, I, these are small, small limbs that I lost in the yard. And the sun's gonna blind you, so. But that's a small limb compared to what I had in the front yard. But, you know, I hadn't been on here in a while, and the reason being, one, I had, was helping somebody drive a truck, looking after that, doing what I could for that. But not only that, then all of a sudden, I had some doctor appointments and stuff like that, and had to check up, and had to back set some, and people wonder why you have to back set. One thing is, when you're a cancer survivor, and your blood work, when you pay attention to your blood work and your blood counts drop and then you get real low in blood and a lot of other things you need to rest and if you don't, then you go, the possibility you could black out, pass out, whichever. During that time that my blood work was went down, I also contracted a tick bite twice. Somewhere here in the yard, I hadn't been in the woods anywhere. That's what everybody asked, where was you in the woods at? I'm like, right here in the yard mowing grass then i had the tick bite turned into lyme disease old-fashioned word tick fever i was had body aches i had headaches it was severely severely bad that i had to wind up going to the emergency room with uh fevers chills rash on my back big patch i've had multiple things with it and uh Still taking the antibiotics. You have to take them for 21 plus days. You gotta stay out of the sunshine. You can't be in direct sunshine because of the antibiotics can react with your skin and cause you to get a severe more rash than what it was from the tick bite. So hard enough trying to stay indoors or stay in the shade or whatever like that, trying to help my wife and uh, do several things that she did without me. She did a lot of canning and other things without me and I'd help her when I could and when I felt good. Being nauseated and hot, sweaty feeling, all them other things going on. You don't really, you don't want to do anything. You just, you have to lay around, be whatever. And I feel for anybody who ever gets it. But that's a, that's an awful feeling. But anyway, my greenhouse survived. I was surprised with the storm that we had with the wind and stuff that back during the hurricanes it tried to take it away, but went through this windstorm. I didn't have a bit of problem. So one thing I want to do is go back, show you what my wife has done. She has been busy with all sorts of things. 
she's been wide open and I'm having to brag on her because she's did it all pretty much this year without me. <laughs> One thing was we harvested corn. My corn's done with now, but you see, we had more corn than I was surprised with. I wound up giving some to friends and that's why I said, you can tell that I haven't been able to work in here because the corn is pretty much done. We had pretty beautiful sunflowers. She, she loves her flowers. And the, the squash turned out real good. I got tons of nut grass. And believe me, if y'all want a load of it, please come get them. I wouldn't advise it, but anyway, tomatoes. We have worked on tomatoes. And that's why I wanted to show you. These tomato rows, them two tomato rows were perfectly beautiful three weeks ago. They were up, standing tall, loaded with tomatoes and everything else. And I'm sorry that the camera's tilted, but uh, they were beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And then all of a sudden the heat came with the rain mix and that's what it turned out to be. They're burnt, they're scalded, they're cooked. But they still got some good tomatoes out there. There's a few in the, it's in where the shade is at that are still good. You don't wanna walk out there this morning because it's, dew is everywhere. <coughs> but that's why I said I got a little bit of peas out here onto the other side. I've, we picked a couple messes on them, but uh, the bug bites, they're awful. I mean, we sprayed them and everything else. And I don't know why, it's because I hadn't been planting here and I'm letting this other stop plot rest, but um, I've had to let it rest, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. The next one I want to show you is, and this is the worst year I've ever had for okra. I've always had a great cock crop of okra never had a, a problem with it before you see my tomatoes were doing fine they were they were as tall as this pole was and then they just that's how quick it went but anyway things happen for a reason but the thing it is i'm still thankful because we got a bountiful harvest off of it but uh i wanted to show you this here this okra patch and i'm telling you that's pitiful I put fertilizer to it. I've done everything, organic matter, wood chips, everything is in here. And that okra just does not like it. It does not want to grow. What I've talked to somebody else about and what the problem is, is when I planted it, it's when we had that cold snap of air. We had real, real cold time then, you know, it never got above about, I don't know, 50, 60 degrees. It never did whatever. And they say what happened is it messed the germination up with it coming up and got whatever. So, but it's barren. It's making a little bit of okra. I mean, it's enough for us to eat. That's about all. Where I have had plenty to sell in the past and whatever else and make money with it to be able to help buy the fertilizer that I use for my garden and other stuff. That it's just, it's unreal. But I got another one to show you, and this is a part to do with the storm the other day. Even though they're only probably eight inches tall, the wind got to them too. And I don't know if I can blow it up or not, but right here, the peas, if you look, they're laid down and crooked like that because the wind was so strong that it blew them flat down. Now they're coming back up. The sun is drawing them back up. I was just absolutely shocked. And this is my second pea crop that I planted. And I wanted to do that because we, we need some peas. I love peas. We eat peas two or three times a week, sometimes four. Um, we don't throw leftover peas out either. But I've had a, I told a certain friend of mine, I said, uh, you won't believe it. I said, but I hadn't put a whole lot to, to these peas. He said, what you mean? I said, I ain't put no fertilizer or nothing to them. 
I said, these are all is growing on organic matter. I let the land rest almost one year. It's almost 10 months, I think it is, that it didn't have anything on it, nothing but weeds. And I'm gonna show you another street that I'm leaving that I hadn't planted that I'm gonna plant something later on in the fall. The only thing I planted on this was a winter crop last year and left it. And I planted it with, with a wheat, rye, clover, turnips, mustard greens and everything just, and I left it. I didn't do anything. All I did was diss it back in. And you can see the difference. It looks 10 times better. But I also replanted some okra the same time. And I'm telling you, these are three rows of okra right here that's almost gonna catch what I got planted over there. They're gonna catch what I got over there because of the heat and the other things. So, you know, that's why I said, you, you'd be surprised what you do if you let your land lay. But anyway, and this is what I'm talking about here. Between that light pole and where the okra is, with all this, this has had nothing planted on it other than the turnips and stuff and mustard greens and clover last year. You see the grass is coming up and the weeds, but I put uh, some organic matter in there, some uh, wood chips and some other stuff, and I got another pile of wood chips. I gotta put some more. And I wanna do that so I can build it up. <clears throat> but uh, that's pretty much what been going on around here. I was able to plant them peas before I got tick bites. But you know, anyway, that's the way it goes, you know, happens and everything. Be patient with me as I walk around. I'm gonna show you where the wood pile's at and we'll end the end the video. But uh, a lot of things has been going on, especially with me. I have to give the wife the credit because she has did it all. She did everything I needed to do. She did the canning, everything. So, but uh, that's why I said I. Fortunate, I didn't have any house damage or anything like that. Everything turned out good. I did clean the house before I got sick. I pressure washed it all the way around. Bought me a little small pressure washer. But anyway, here's the wood pile. These were the tree limbs that fell out of this tree. There was three big limbs fell out of this one and one more over there over my barn and dented the edge of the barn just a little bit, but I don't think you can see where they broke off at. But you know, the Lord prunes where, where he needs to prune and we don't do it sometimes. But anyway, anyway, right, right there, it's where it broke off. You can see it right above my head here. That's one of the big limbs and it was just as big as, as these other ones up through here that they broke off. That's how much wind we had and they all blew out towards the road. There was another one that was up here that, that ran out this way that broke off. And there was one here that went out and it broke off. So we spent the morning yesterday morning just cleaning up the front yard. And that's why I said it was this high all the way across here that you couldn't even see my neighbor's house with tree limbs just laid all in here like that. So we worked on it and got it up. Had a, still got a lot of stuff that's in the, in the yard and I hope you can see it. But anyway, if you look hard, there's still stuff out here that I hadn't got up yet. I ain't been able to pick those limbs and all up yet. But still got work to do, still got things to do. I'm just very thankful that didn't have any damage in any buildings or on my home, anything. But uh, I just want to thank the Lord for protecting me. Not only that, thank him for the generator I had to keep me cool. My generator run 28 hours straight, never slowed up. Uh, come on 30 seconds after the power went out and stayed on till the power went off. And I have to say, money well spent. If you don't have one, a generator or a backup generator, if you can afford it, 
do it. If you can't, I understand. But uh, on a homestead, I think people need some type of uh, backup system because when you have freezers and other stuff and, you know, multiple things you need to do, you got to have somewhere to do. But anyway, I'm not going to be here much longer now. I want to just tell you all again, thank you for watching Hancock Hill Homestead. And don't forget to look up Brother James. He keeps mentioning me on his on his uh his videos but i love watching him yesterday he was talking about his little tractor and stuff i i uh, hadn't done one of my tractor things yet but i got one i gotta repair and i got another one i gotta re re repair as well but anyway everything's been good here except for the little tick bite and going through it but thank y'all for the ones that prayed for me got me back way on the doctor dr hamlet the er and Dr. Jackie, y'all right on. Y'all spot on. But, uh, guys, thank you. Hope you enjoy watching what I did. And hope nobody else suffered any bad loss or anything during the storm. But we will recover. It just takes us longer. If you like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. You know the routine. Everybody says it. But, you know, I appreciate you guys. Sorry I haven't been on here in a while. But... Hopefully there'll be more of them now. Have a great day. See you on the next one.